Welcome back, and here we go into the next module. We've explored our past. We've learned about what it took to see our past in a different light, to be more impactful and powerful for us. We've understood that the present is determined by our language and by our thinking, and that we have control to some level about how we perceive our present. So now let's look towards the future, about sharpening our vision of that North Star and learn how to focus our energy to get there and become truly the self we were always meant to be. In order to do that, we encourage you to do an interesting exercise. And that exercise is gonna to be to lie in your deathbed and think deeply about your life. And at this point, you could think about how you will be remembered right now. And then the next part of the exercise will be to imagine you've achieved that North Star. You've done your life's work and you've lived the greatest ability that you can imagine. What would that feel like to have your loved ones, your family, your children, speaking about the life that you've lived under the circumstance that you live the best life you can imagine? In order to do that, we talked about that life is a soup full of ingredients, full of different elements, and we can add those ingredients together to create the life of our dreams. Edie, can you share with us the ingredients for living a life that's well-lived? What's the recipe that you could recommend that we can put together so that we live the life that we're proud of? To have a well-lived life is not to do anything in excess. It's good to have a balance between working, loving, and playing. To be childlike, but not childish. So, as a child, you don't care about the consequences, but now you are celebrating that even something that required more work gave you a satisfaction that you didn't give up on anything that was important to you. So this is a good time, of course, to never lie to yourself. Your spirit is going to tell you that your life was a constant celebration, that you did a great deal more than what is humanly possible. It takes courage to make average uh, grades or to just be an average person. It's not really always what you do, it's who you are. You are God's one of a kind, beautiful, cherished, love with the ability to give rather than waiting to get. Giving is wonderful. Beautiful. It gives you a wonderful feeling of satisfaction in your deathbed. I am at the evening part of my life. And I do wonder how I want to be remembered. And of course, I want to be remembered that I did everything in my power to live a lifestyle, not a death style. And yet, we all gonna die. That's the truth. That is the truth. And I just want to know that I will say to myself the following. I'm here now, ready to look back. And instead of asking what the world has given me, I am going to concentrate more than anything else what I have given to the world that I was chosen 
to survive hell and develop my inner resources, acknowledging that no one makes me happy but me. And for me to lie in a dead bed is the last celebration, truly. So here I am, hoping that I will celebrate my life, that I still will be in charge of my faculties. In order to find that moment of introspection, to look at our life in terms of what we've achieved at that last moment, which could happen tomorrow, or it could happen 20 years from now, we don't know. But what we can be assured of is that what we put our attention towards between this moment and that moment is what we can control. And the way that we put our ingredients together, the way that our life is an amalgamation of our experiences, of our stories, and ultimately of our choices, can lead us to getting to that, that goal, that North Star. Edie, when you emerged from the Holocaust, could you have ever imagined that you would be here today speaking to people, changing millions of people's lives? Not in a million years. I was very weak, I was very skinny, and I was very, very hungry. Unfortunately, there were people who were very unhappy that we did make it because they moved in our homes they took over whatever was left there, and they were not very happy to move out. I remember one person said to me, you know, more people came back than left. Imagine how I felt. No, I wasn't welcome at all. My late husband's family was very wealthy. It was unfortunately not so good because when the communists took over, they confiscated my husband's business. Right. And they threw him in jail. So I didn't say, why me? I said, what now? I took out my big diamond ring I put this bracelet in my little girl's diaper and I went to the jail and I gave the big diamond ring to the warden. I scooped up my husband and we ended up in Vienna at the Rothschild Hospital to flee the communists and I came to America penniless. And here I am today here I am today talking to you how to celebrate that last wonderful celebration to be in my deathbed and feeling very grateful what I was able to give to the world and not asking what the world has given me. It's a life well lived, Edie. Every moment. But it wasn't simple to get to this point. There were so many obstacles to getting here, but maybe it's in the obstacles that came the greatness. Yes. I feel like one of the lessons that you have given us, and I, I, I'm always in awe of this lesson, and I believe that everybody who reads your books and who knows your story will attest to this idea that our, our trauma, our challenges, our obstacles are truly our biggest gifts. Yes. And that if we can see those moments of our life as gifts, we're able to transform our life. One of the things that may be a little useful to you, just to close your eyes and imagine that you go to Spain and you go to one of those cathedrals and imagine you going through that beautiful, beautiful, big, big, big gate, and then you see some steps, and you go down the steps, one, two, 
to and count to ten and then there is another door that takes you to a beautiful garden and you sit down there and look up at the sky and celebrate every moment that you're still filled with blessings and memories from your life that you collected. Every beautiful moment that you, that only you, one of a kind, lived especially free from fear and filled with love, joy, and even more passion, but you made it thus far and celebrating your specialness, your preciousness. That's how I picture myself turning life into a constant celebration. Edie, for those of us who feel that we have still a distance to go to get to that place where we can say, we've lived a beautiful life. Yeah. For those of us who feel that we're on our path and the destination is, is a long way away, not maybe that we have a long life ahead of us, but that we have a distance to cover until we feel that we've, we've emerged under that North Star. How do we cultivate in ourselves the inner resources to get there? Well, how do you climb Mount Everest? One step at a time. One step at a time. As long as you know what is waiting for you, you may do it with more enthusiasm, taking maybe 10 to 20 minutes every day and celebrating how special you are and how beautiful it is to move towards the last moment and living it with constant celebration. Because we don't appreciate, you know, what we have until we lose it. So to me, every moment is very, very precious. Right. One step at a time. I love it. And you have your goal, you have your arrow to follow. You said something else that I think is very powerful, which is, your value doesn't come from what you've accomplished for you. It's for what you've given to the world, what you've yes, given to others. Absolutely. And there is this idea that in giving, we receive. To give more is to get more. Giving is really getting. When I danced for Dr. Mengele, and he gave me a piece of bread, and I was hungry. I could have gobbled that bread immediately. And thank God, I chose to climb up and share it with the girls who were there with me. And I tell you that when I was in a death march, and I was about to stop and be shot. Those girls came and carried me so I wouldn't die. You never regret what you do. You regret what you don't do. So I want to live to the fullest. You may have done some bad things, if you knew then what you know now, you would have done things differently. Right. So I hope you have time to forgive yourself. The way you talk to yourself, 
the way you think that's what's going to happen. So get rid of two words, always and never. I always do that. I'm never going to find a man. You know, get rid of those words. I think that could be useful to think before you say anything and see whether it's necessary, whether it's very important, and most of all, is it kind? That is important, that you talk to yourself kindly. When I was ill many years ago, my doctor put this thing in my mouth. I was intubated, and I wanted to yank that thing out, as I told you before, but then they tied my hands. But after a few days, the doctor said, he said, I'm going to take it out tomorrow. So I got ready, ready, ready for tomorrow morning. I show up for him, and he's taking a deep breath, and he says, you know what? I'm thinking that I want to wait one more day. Eh? And I didn't tell him I don't know if I can last one more day, because I, I used all my tricks in my trade. But that night, I'm going to tell you is what you can tell yourself. I did it then, and I can do it now. Mm. In my case, I said to myself, I did it in Auschwitz. I can do it here. And then sure enough, got up in the morning, he promised, he did it. Mm. That's what I would like you to do, to take charge of your life. No one makes you happy. You make yourself happy. I know we're going through a hard time. We're going through the valley, valley of the shadow of death. Something good is going to come out of that some kind of a peace you're going to have when you are in your deathbed and looking back at everything and anything that guided you to be such a beautiful, loving, kind human being. At this point now, I'm a father. I have twin boys, almost two years old, and imagining myself on my deathbed um, was a very different experience at this point than maybe if I had done this three years ago or five years ago. But at this point now, for me to imagine, what would, what would Noah and Dylan say as they're around my bed? What would the moment be that I have left for them? What's my legacy? Will they be proud? Will they be disappointed? I can't control what they're gonna say, but I can have a vision of what I would hope they would say. And I can live my life to direct myself towards that. And that helps shape that North Star for me. And from starting this project by creating that North Star to then fine tuning it with this part of the project and continuing that journey forward, as I say, this is where I want to get to, not just for myself, not for what I want to leave behind, but what do I want them to feel? What do I want people around me to experience? If you are a parent, I ask you, when your child brings home a good report card or something that you uh, want to say that I'm so proud of you. Don't do that. Say, I hope you are proud of yourself because I love you no matter what. You don't have to perform for me. That not I am proud of you, I hope you are proud of yourself. Self-love is self-care. We talked about it a million times. It's not narcissistic. And I think in your deathbed, you're going to be so happy that you did everything in your power 
to form a human family and do everything in your power to find peace and goodwill. Thank you. What a beautiful and thought-provoking conversation. I hope you're finding it as insightful as I am. So now is the time for you to take out your notebook and do the exercise. See how it feels. Take your time. We'll be here when you get back. Choosing what I pass on. In this module, we will travel to the future of our deathbed and discover how we are currently being seen by our loved ones. We will also transport ourselves to the future where our North Star has been fulfilled and feel how we are seen then. Through this process, we begin to gain insights and inspiration for stepping into the future we wish to live. Have your notebook and pen by your side. Now close your eyes and take a deep breath in. Exhale fully. Take another big breath in. And as you exhale, feel yourself relaxing, sitting into your chair, your shoulders and your arms relaxing, your back relaxing. Notice your body getting completely relaxed. In your mind's eye, get up from your chair and go towards the door in the room. Open the door and see outside a place in nature that you love. Step through the threshold of the door and walk out to that place of nature that you love. As you walk along, you see before you a huge tree. So big, you cannot see the top. Walk towards the tree. You see a hole there, big enough to enter. You get closer to the tree and you stick your head in, and then you bring your whole body inside to the tree and see total darkness. Before you are some rungs, you begin to climb up, hand over hand, up in the center of the tree, climbing up, up into the darkness. Keep climbing as the light below you begins to fade away. Climbing up, up, hand over hand, foot over foot until you are in complete darkness. Keep climbing. Climbing, climbing as the light above you begins to emerge. Climbing up, up until you are completely awash in light. You climb up until you are at the top of the tree and you begin to pull yourself up out of the tree. Feel yourself pushing your body up out of the tree. As you step out of the tree, you notice you are on green rolling hills all around you. Take a look around and see that. In the distance, you see a building there are people entering the building. Begin to walk towards the building. As you get closer, you see everyone is wearing black as they enter the building. You realize they are going to a funeral. As you get closer, you begin to recognize the people entering the building. You realize this is your funeral. As you walk closer and closer, people fill up the building until there's no more people. You walk to the door of the building, which is open. You step through the door and you see before you rows of people, your family and friends seated there Before you is an aisle. 
and at the long end of the aisle is a bed, an empty bed. Everyone that you know is sitting there waiting and looking at the bed. You begin to walk down the aisle. When you get to the front of the room, you lie down on the bed. Take a deep breath in. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale, all the people in your life, all the people that you love and have known begin to speak about you in your life. Not what you did so much, but the kind of person that you were. Listen to what they have to say. One by one, the people in your life begin to say how you were in your life what they saw in you. Listen. Breathe. a deep breath in and as you exhale everyone stops talking and the room goes completely black notice how you feel breathe now bring to your mind's eye your north star Say your North Star to yourself and feel yourself having fulfilled that vision. Notice that in your lifetime, you have realized your North Star. Feel that in your body. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, the lights in the room come back on and your family and friends begin to speak again, reflecting on the person that you were who had fulfilled their North Star. What do they say now? Breathe. Notice how you are feeling. Notice how they are feeling. Pay attention to the legacy you have left behind. While there may be more to say, the speaking stops. Take a deep breath in and sit up from the bed. 
Look around the room. See all the beautiful faces that have come to share their experience of you and your life. Send each of them love as you look around the room. When you're ready, get up from the bed and begin to walk down the aisle towards the door. Exit the building and walk out across the green fields, walking away from the building, walking towards the tree. When you get to the tree, begin to lower yourself down into the tree, down into the darkness. Slowly, slowly lowering yourself hand over hand, climbing down, down into the tree until you are in complete darkness. Keep climbing down, down until the light begins to emerge at the bottom climbing down, down, foot over foot, hand over hand until you are standing on the ground. Emerge from the tree back into that place of nature that you love. Walk towards the door that leads you back to your room. Cross through the threshold of the door and sit back down in your chair. Take a big breath in. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, and open your eyes. Now write down in your notebook what you experienced. What did you hear your family and friends say about you on your deathbed the first time? How did that make you feel? What did they say about you when you had fulfilled your North Star? Pay attention to how that lives in your body. Pause the video and begin writing. When you are done, hit play and complete the module. Welcome back. How was the exercise for you? How was it envisioning yourself on your deathbed? can be a difficult moment to imagine, but in a way beautiful at the same time. And now as we go forward, we're going to integrate all of that education into the strength to find that North Star, to keep sculpting exactly what it looks like and prepare yourself for the journey ahead. See you in the next module. Mm -hmm.